This is Matthew Cratter's Bitcoin University. Today, I want to answer the question, will Bitcoin Core 30 cripple cloud nodes? We've already spoken about how Bitcoin Core 30 defaults will herd node runners into relaying large unconfirmed op return transactions around the network, and that these unconfirmed transactions will likely contain CSAM. Since the exact same thing happened to BSV, which is a failed fork of Bitcoin, the same thing happened to BSV when they blew open their op returns from 80 bytes to 100,000 bytes in 2019, just like Bitcoin Core is planning to do today with the next release. And as Luke Dasher points out here, note that when BSV made the same change, there was actual CSAM uploaded almost immediately. CSAM, of course, stands for Child Sexual Abuse Material, and it's one of the most disturbing and disgusting things in the world. And unfortunately, uh, we're now having to discuss this because Bitcoin Core is forcing through some changes. I'll put a link to this if you want to dig a little deeper it, this video that says Bitcoin Core 30 is a CSAM relay service. And what we're concerned here primarily is with the transactions, the uncon unconfirmed transactions being relayed. This is one problem with advocating for and enabling lots of non-monetary data on, on Bitcoin, like Bitcoin Core has been doing for the past two years. It doesn't make Bitcoin better money, and it opens Bitcoin up to an endless stream of potential problems that we're only beginning to think through. Blowing open op return from 80 bytes to 100,000 bytes really is the height of irresponsibility, and you don't need to have a degree in computer science to recognize this. People like Adam Back, who obviously knows a lot about computer science, agrees as he writes here to Antoine. He has a point, in my opinion, 160 byte data carrier size, that's referring to an op return size, has a reasonable organic rationale, very reminiscent of the 40, 80 byte past, but 100,000 bytes or 100 kilobytes is very weak and people see that so they don't like it. Avoid future drama is not really rationale. You can expect users who disagree to buy. Here's the basic principle, of course, that we've been talking about for years. You simply should not change Bitcoin unless you absolutely need to. And the new mempool policy that Core is pushing through in 2025 is perhaps the largest unforced error that I've ever seen. It's absolutely astonishing. I want to pause really briefly here. If you're finding this video interesting so far, I just ask you to help to support this channel's educational mission. Hit the subscribe button. That does really help. Leave a like, leave a comment, question, suggestion for a future video, and share this video with a friend or family member. So it's not surprising that there are other potential problems that may come from this upgrade, from these changes, and some of these Bitcoin mechanic. Mechanic has pointed out in his latest video, which I'll link to in the description notes below. And the argument he makes in this video in the first 10 minutes is the argument about malware. The malware argument is similar to the CSAM argument. Current op returns of 80 bytes are too small to contain high fidelity illicit images or illicit videos. And again, we're, very, we're most concerned with these unconfirmed transactions being circulated by nodes containing this nasty stuff and essentially helping this nasty stuff to get into future blocks. But current op return sizes of 80 bytes is too small to really put anything in there. Op returns of 100,000 bytes though are more than enough to put really disgusting CSAM stuff. Likewise, op returns of 80 bytes are too small to contain a significant amount of malware, malware code, but op returns of 100,000 bytes are more than enough to embed malware code. So what happens when someone creates an op return transaction with a full 100,000 byte piece of malware embedded in it? Once these kinds of large op return transactions are regularly being relayed around the network because of Core 30 node software, they will start hitting the mempools of people who are running Bitcoin nodes using cloud computing services such as AWS or Microsoft Azure. Obviously, large cloud computing providers are constantly scanning their servers to make sure that people are not doing anything dangerous or illegal there. Now imagine what happens when AWS or Azure starts seeing hundreds or maybe even thousands of large unconfirmed op return transactions that contain actual malware code hitting Bitcoin nodes that are being hosted there. In transit, these transactions are encrypted, at least for newer versions of Core. I believe past core 28. But once they hit a Bitcoin node on an AWS server, that node will need to decrypt the transaction and hold it in RAM while it verifies that it is a legitimate transaction. Now, what do you think AWS is going to do when they see lots of copies of the same malware code being held in the RAM of every single Bitcoin node that they're hosting? Because of course, is the whole point of mempools and Bitcoin nodes to share these transactions, these unconfirmed transactions across the network. So what's AWS going to do when they see lots of copies because there are lots of people running nodes, nodes in AWS and they all have the same unconfirmed transactions. When they see lots of copies of the same malware code, 
What are they going to do? Perhaps nothing, but I think it's more likely that they'll immediately begin to flag and turn off the accounts of people running Bitcoin nodes in the cloud since, thanks to Bitcoin Core's update, Bitcoin Core 30 software, those nodes are now robust malware distribution systems. And don't forget that they're slinging around CSAM at the same time, which could receive similar flags from Azure or AWS, as it probably should because of the kind of material it is. Now, as these nodes go down, it could cause rippling outages across the ecosystem, including exchanges and app providers that run nodes in the cloud. And here's the really annoying thing. Even if you're running Bitcoin knots in the cloud, when this happens, your node will probably get flagged and taken down as well, since even your knots node needs to take a look at each incoming unconfirmed transaction to make sure that it's legit. So your knots node will be a good steward and not forward large op returns above 40 bytes or 80 bytes or wherever you set it. And that's another thing to remember. Bitcoin knots gives the user all the configurability that he or she needs, whereas Bitcoin Core wants to tell you what to do and they're in the process of removing this configurability. So your knots node will be a good steward. It's not going to forward op returns above wherever you set it. You probably should set it 40 or 80 bytes, but your knots node will still be accepting those large op return malware transactions from core 30 nodes that are being forced by the defaults to circulate them. Yep, just another unforced error from a team of devs that either lacks the ability to think adversarially or is being driven to make these changes by other motivations. I go back and forth on this. Here's a quick AI overview of AWS malware detection. They use various uh, forms of it. They have one for S3 objects. S3 just stands for Amazon Simple Storage Service. So they have one that includes a managed scan engine, scanning files for known threats and novel malware. And then I imagine this would be the category for Bitcoin nodes, though I don't know enough about this to be sure. For running systems, agents like Guard Duty, run, Guard Duty Runtime Monitoring can detect fileless malware by analyzing system behavior. So these may be the things that are triggered by running Bitcoin Core 30 in the cloud. Now, is Bitcoin mechanics analysis here, which I'm drawing on heavily, is it flawed in any way? If so, I'd really like to hear from people who have expertise in this area of cloud computing and malware detection. So this video, this really is a question. Will Bitcoin Core 30 cripple cloud nodes? I think the CSAM thing is bad enough, but I think this malware thing is also interesting to take a look at. As Mechanic points out here, though, this isn't a problem for current really highly embedded things like inscriptions where you need to reconstruct everything. It's not just sitting there in plain text like it will be in RAM with op returns, unconfirmed op returns. As Mechanic points out here, malware detection is not going to reassemble stuff hacked into taproot transactions with op return. It doesn't have to, which is the problem with rolling out the red carpet by blowing open op return. Now, here's what Mechanic thinks is going to happen. I think this is quite plausible. Number one, 100,000 byte, 100 kilobyte op returns become standard. This is after Bitcoin Core 30 is rolled out. Unless, uh, unless the rollout is delayed or unless people really don't upgrade. Number two, someone inevitably broadcasts something that triggers malware detection. All Bitcoin cloud infrastructure gets knocked offline. Major disruption exchanges and pools go offline. Panic results in band-aid solutions as we can't hard fork to rip whatever it is out. Template creating pools, these are mining pools, being almost completely centralized are lobbied to run custom filters to sift this stuff out in the future. Why could, we, why could we just have not relayed this stuff in the first place by leaving data carrier size where it was? But if this happens, they'll be forced to run custom filters. Then the already next to impossible task of decentralizing mining will be made significantly harder. Running a node will now be reckless, require tertiary software to maintain a clean mempool. And then number nine, we're now, Bitcoin now becomes a data storage network where only approved data can make it in rather than a monetary network where all arbitrary data was undesirable. This is the bleak future we may be facing. So get the word out. I'll put a link. I'll put links in the description notes below that can teach you how to run a Bitcoin Knots node for free, how to build your own, use your laptop or purchase a personal server to do it. So be sure to check out the description notes if you want to help to fight this problem and run Bitcoin Knots and send a signal to Core and also protect yourself from relaying this sort of garbage around the network when this stuff comes online. You'll definitely want to be running something like Bitcoin Knots or something with similar filters. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the subscribe and like buttons. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks all for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.